thank you for joining me, folks. <laughs> and really, really serious apologies uh, about, about that. But hopefully um, we can get through some of this. So uh, I'm at Desk Hub in San Diego. Uh, they're a co-working space. Uh, big shout out to them. Thank you for letting me hang out for the day. They also have an office in Scottsdale. Uh, apparently they just opened one by the waterfront, which is pretty cool. Um, so go, if you're in either of those locations, I would highly recommend checking it out if you're looking for a cool place to work. Um, and even if it's just for the day, but if you have a small company entrepreneur type thing, this is a great space. So I like to come here um, and you know network with some folks and just kind of get out of the, the studio a little bit. Now, in terms um, of my first thing I want to talk about, it's that I'm going to the Fremont factory on a VIP tour uh, with the with Kim and her husband from Like Tesla. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you to Kim and her husband from the YouTube channel Like Tesla. I highly recommend checking out their videos. They're more vlog style, so they talk a lot about, you know, their travel, news updates, and all that. So um, they're super entertaining, and I link to them in the description below. Absolutely go check out and subscribe to their channel. So um, that's first and foremost. So thank you to them. And I, I, not being much of a vlogger, probably uh, I'm going to take some photos and do some stuff. And in fact, I'm ha I have a meetup um, of the night before the tour with uh, me, Kim, and her husband. And then uh, James Cook, who's also a Tesla YouTuber, and um, the guys from Now You Know. Um, so that's Zach, Bobby, and Jesse. So we're all going to meet up and uh, hopefully have some dinner, maybe grab some drinks, and maybe record some videos. So um, we're all getting together here for this Tesla VIP factory tour, which is super cool. So uh, I'm excited about that. Um, and the way that works is uh, there, it's about the referral program. And so uh, I barely started doing my stuff, my channel back then, so I didn't get enough referrals, but they were kind enough to invite me on. So this current re reward program, the big prize, or one of the big prizes is you get an invite to the Model 3 event. I'm two away. Um, so I need two more referrals. This, these are just people that are gonna buy a new Tesla. Um, you can buy new from inventory as well, so you can get a cheaper one. Um, and you just get a thousand bucks off. There's no catch to you. You just use my code, you get a thousand bucks off. And um, the reason I'm making a pledge for it is because if you get two two more for in the next 30 or 40 days, um, then I get to go to the Model 3 event, which of course I'll do just like this tour. I'm gonna try to take some good photos and I'll share with you that story. So uh, if you or anyone you know is in the market for one, please consider using our code. Uh, again, thousand bucks off to you. Uh, and, and no other catch or anything like to it. It's teslanomics.co slash TD. Okay, so, and it looks like everything's working good. So, hey, thank you everyone for making your way over here. Uh, serious apologies about that. I'm gonna try to pull this up on my uh, on my computer. I have my laptop sitting here. Um, so, so I can actually, but okay, uh, everything was coming through. So, um, so, okay, so got that stuff out of the way. Now, this is where I talk about the long and short. And so the short for the week is the thing I'm betting kind of against and the thing I'm, I'm not a fan of. And um, what's happening with that is uh, there's something called the Osborne effect. I'm gonna read this and I put the description in the video here. Um, the Osborne effect is a term referring to unintended consequences of a company announcing a future product unaware of the risks involved or when timing is misjudged. Sound familiar? Uh, which ends up having a negative impact on the sales of the current product. And I bring this up because the stock just dropped about 5% after their latest earnings call. And this is kind of the phenomenon that a lot of the economists and analysts um, looking at Tesla were thinking about. So um, the, this is the case. Uh, the case is when um, the product is announced too long before its actual availability, it has an immediate effect of customers canceling or deferring orders for the current product, knowing that it will soon be obsolete. And any unexpected delays often means that the new product becomes to be perceived as vaporware, uh, damaging the company's credibility and profitability. So if you looked at the earnings call, you saw, yes, they hit the record number of, uh, of revenue and cars delivered and all those kind of things, but uh, sales the Model S and Model X seem to be slowing down. And so um, are attributing, well, everyone wants to wait and see what the Model 3 is, so they don't want to buy on the Model S yet because they may want the 3 instead. This is where Tesla's been deselling um, the Model the Model 3. And I think they're doing a good job of it. Uh, I personally am looking at it going, you know, um, as an S owner, I'm not sure if I'm going to want this car. I have a reservation. I'm going to get it. Uh, but I may end up selling it um, because it may not suit my needs. That's me buying into their kind of propaganda. I, secretly, I hope it's gonna be a fantastic car. I, I, it probably will if it's anything like um, any of their other vehicles. So I don't, I don't have doubt.
Um, but there's kind of this weird thing going on. So um, let me just continue reading uh, what's going on with this article here. So uh, the term was coined after Osborne Computer Corporation, in which the company took more than a year to make its next product available and eventually ran out of cash and went bankrupt in 1985. So that is... Um, that is uh, one tale of a computer company that was doing those kind of things. Uh, another one is Apple, right? Where Apple is actually, um, uh, it, you know, successful in this whole thing. So, okay, it looks like I have chat up. So let me pull that up now. Cool. So I should have you guys on chat if you have any questions or anything um, as we go along here. So uh, the stock dropped by, by 5% uh, the day after the earnings call because of this. And then it went right back up, actually, uh, which is kind of crazy. So um, even today, uh, Evercore ISI, which is a big investment bank, um, they, uh, they picked up coverage again on Tesla with an outperforming rating and a $330 price target. So uh, as of right now, it's at uh, 3.07 and 47 cents and uh, they're projecting them to be at 330. So that bumped them back up. And I think you're gonna see um, a, a big bump in Tesla stock uh, as a result. So uh, the firm forecasts that Tesla will hit its 500,000 unit target at the Q1 of 2019 on a rolling 12 month view. The long-term view on the stock is that it's an extreme growth story. So this is basically what, um, what, what everyone's been talking about for a while. Um, now, as of right now, shares are up uh, and it's, you know, it's a tremendous uh, jump from a 52 week trading range uh, from $178 at the low to $327 at the high. So um, my short was people thinking that Tesla was gonna suffer the same fate of the Osborne computer company. I believe that they're much more like Apple and more like the story that we're gonna see where, uh, you know, when, when, the, when the iPod, came out, um, Apple was in pretty dire straits. Uh, you know, their PCs and, or computers weren't selling. Um, none of that stuff was happening. And then they came out with one innovative product after another after another to where now they essentially rule the world when it comes to hardware um, for consumer side anyways. So um, yeah, so I, that's I think where it's going. Um, that I'm optimistic about it because I have you know personal experience which gives me a bias. I'm also an investor and all that. But I think they're headed um, for a much brighter future than some of the analysts were, were predicting. Um, and, and I kind of feel like that might have been just the people that had a short position that wanted to you know Try to, try to unload some of that because they know um, things are going well. So um, when it comes to this, this phenomenon, the Osborne effect though, uh, the thing that's kind of crazy is uh, even, after, even during the earnings call, um, the Tesla Model Y, uh, we have some updates about. Uh, this is arriving in late 2019 or 2020, and it's on the non, it's not gonna be on the Model 3 platform. So this, and I saw some other articles, people were really, really upset about this uh, because um, the idea was, look, uh, you build the Model 3 platform, and then from there, what you'll have is essentially uh, the, the assembly line and everything ready to make the Model Y. Now, if you don't recall or aren't aware, the Model Y is the, uh, is the cheaper, smaller version of the Model X. Uh, so just like the Model 3 is the cheaper, smaller version of the Model S, the Model Y will be the similar model there. So it'll be a lot cheaper, a lot more economical, and a, a bit smaller, more of a crossover SUV. So um, on Tesla Roddy, they were the Model Y electric compact SUV will ride on a different platform than the Model 3, allowing for higher manufacturing efficiency. While Musk hasn't revealed a large amount of information about the Model Y, he told analysts during today's Q1 earnings call, that was last week, that contrary to expectations, the Model Y will ride on a completely different platform. And that's that doesn't sound like it makes sense. Um, you know, uh, Elon, I think, knows this stuff a lot better than me or any of these analysts, uh, so I'm not going to argue with him, but it is it is kind of odd, right? Um, now, the changes in the vehicle's design will allow for much higher automation in the factory. Uh, Musk viewed the Model Y as a crucial piece to reach the one million vehicle production target. So that's a million vehicles, uh, I believe, per year that they're trying to, to achieve by 2020. Um, the future compact SUV is expected to arrive in late 2019 or early 2020 after the company scales up production of the Model 3. So we're talking about um, we're talking about the uh, 
the effect, the Osborne effect, and what that's going to do. And then we're talking. And then during the call, he starts to you know talk about products that are three, four years out, and that's assuming they hit their targets. So. Um, that's that's the situation going on with that. Uh, that's my short. I, I don't think they're going to suffer the same fate as Osmore Computers. Um, I think they're going to they're going to be more of an Apple kind of a story. Uh, and, and there's a million reasons um, to talk about to to think about them that way. Okay. So my long for the week, the thing I'm betting on, uh, is the Workhorse W15 electric pickup. Um, it looks to take on Tesla and Ford. Ford has, uh, I believe, a hybrid um, F-150 coming out. Um, Tesla obviously has their pickup truck, uh, which I w uh, was just mentioning there. So um, I'm going to read you a little bit about Workhorse here. So commercial truck maker Workhorse has unveiled a plug-in hybrid pickup that goes on sale in late 2018, so pretty soon. Uh, the company currently specializes in hybrid and electric step vans, but builds an all-new custom chassis for its first pickup offering, the W15, which has sci-fi movie-style composite and carbon fiber body riding on a traditional steel frame. So, um, some notes about it. Uh, we have, uh, it's a 45 kilowatt hour battery, which isn't much. It gives it an, only an 80 mile range, but it does have a, uh, a gas component as well, so it'll still be able to go um, longer distances. Um, now it has a combined 460 horsepower all-wheel drive system. The full-size crew cab can tow up to 5,000 pounds and carry 2,200 pound payload, uh, both roughly comparable to a strong V6 truck. Uh, an outlet built into the bedside can also provide an on-site uh, on power for tools uh, directly from the battery. I don't know if that's not the right answer, <laughs> if that's the right answer there. Um, it'll have a frunk though, which I thought was kind of interesting, given more storage and it's a truck, so I don't know. Um, there's only one trim level uh, that will be offered um, and comes standard with automatic emergency braking and lane keep assist for 52500 So it's, uh, it's a fairly cheap car, or a fairly cheap truck, I would say. Um, and uh, the company's uh, Loveland, Ohio factory is uh, has the capacity to build up to 60,000 trucks annually. So um, this is my long, and um, I say that because uh, we have uh, more companies coming into the EV market. Granted, I know this isn't a battery EV, but it's still, you know, it, it's still uh, along the same vein. And so, um, I'm a fan of this. Uh, I think competition is good. Uh, I think uh, just like Chevy coming out with the Bolt and um, and VW coming out with all their new cars and all the other companies getting into the mix here um, is just going to it's going to help us make that transition to sustainable transport. And really, if you go back, that's kind of the main the main goal, right? I mean, uh, Tesla wants to be successful and sell their cars, but uh, I think it's one of those things where a rising tide lifts all sails here. So uh, the more people that are into buying EVs, uh, the more people that are are going to be buying Teslas, so um, I, I would I would uh, you know put money on the bet that Tesla is actually stoked on this as well uh, because it, it is going to really drive the market and we need in order for it to really make a transition we need it to be an all types of vehicles so it's not just uh, you know sexy little cars it's it's trucks it's vans it's garbage trucks it's everything um, so I'm excited about this um, and I put a link in there this is actually from Fox News of all places um, and so go check that out uh, uh, after the call here and uh, and check that out it's kind of fun looking um, it, and, and I don't know. So there you go. Okay. So uh, earnings call uh, happened last week, and uh, I have some updates here. Now you can go, and a lot of people have already talked about all the stuff and, and the numbers and all that. But I, I want to dig into some of the um, the stuff that uh, some of the tea leaves, as we as we would say. Uh, these are some of the things that I think are more interesting, and I'm getting these from Bloomberg. So I'm going to read through them a little bit, and then I'll kind of give you my thoughts. Um, first is that uh, the Model 3 is close to the bullseye. Um, as Tesla approaches the July launch of its first mass market car, uh, Musk provided details that may assuage nervous investors and reservation holders. The newest Schuler press line has been powered on. That's the final system that's actually going to be doing it because they're skipping the test phase. Um, the paint shop is, prep is complete, welding and assembly lines are coming together, and there have been no major hiccups with the test cars. Uh, it's pretty close to the bullseye, was the quote from Elon. Um, I don't know anything that would prevent us from starting production in July and exceeding 5,000 units a week by the end of the year. Uh, now, if you recall, I believe they had 100,000 uh, units for this year um, for their target. Uh, Electric, I saw, put out 80,000. 
um, and then uh, a, a few other folks put out other more conservative estimates right around 50,000. Uh, in, in any regard, um, I, I think that uh, all signs point to yes, and um, we're, a lot of us are, are excited about this because it means we're going to get our Model 3s this year. Um, I am hopeful, you know, I'm a current Tesla owner and I live in California, and I put my, my reservation in super early on um, the, the day of so uh, hopefully I'll be able to get one um, pretty early on and share every little detail about it as, as I can with you guys um, and then the big question becomes whether or not I'll keep it um, now I know for some that may sound blasphemous but uh, being a Model S owner I, I love my S and I'm a little worried that this the, the storage space or maybe the lack of the the distance and all those other other little bells and whistles uh, may, may you know uh, push me to sell it but I guess we'll cross, cross that bridge when we come to it okay so um, Tesla is also building uh, its own body shops so uh, following criticism about wait times for body work Tesla will launch a new network of company owned body shops it's also opening 100 new retail delivery and service locations in anticipation of the Model 3 when customers need to have work done in the future Musk said the loaner vehicles they'll receive will all be top-of-the-line p100d versions of the Model S and Model X um, I'm calling bullshit on that, <laughs> and I say that because um, I recently was going to put my car in um, for some brakes. They were squeaking a little bit, and I, I was I was asking uh, the the service guys about it, and, and they said, "Yeah, well, we can get you a loaner from Hertz Rental Cars." And uh, I thought, "What? I, like, I'm not going to get a Tesla. This is, I, you know, I I can't imagine um, doing that." And they said, yeah, well, they actually cut the number of cars that we have to loan out. And so you may have to wait months in order to, to guarantee that you'll get one. And I kind of just said, all right, fine, forget it. You know, it's not that big a deal. So um, if this is true, that's fantastic. But certainly right now, that's it's not true. Um, and the trend that they told me on the service line when I called them was that uh, they actually were, were reducing the number of Teslas available for loaner cars. Um, so... I love what they're saying, but I, I need to see some some evidence of it because right now I'm not um, I'm not not there. So okay. Now uh, Tesla is adding mobile repair trucks. I've talked about this a little bit before. Um, the repairs. Most repairs don't require a car lift, Musk said, and mobile trucks are cheaper and more convenient. Proactive service, where Tesla identifies problems remotely before the driver is even aware of them. And the ability to efficiently service, uh, schedule service more than offsets the cost of driving to meet customers, Musk said. For bigger problems, the service centers are expanding and some with as many as 80 car lifts. So uh, I did a video on this a couple weeks ago. Um, I, they are making progress, yes, but um, is it going to be enough? Uh, and, and that's a big question. And so it's kind of a, a, a game of whack-a-mole where um, if they are uber successful in manufacturing the cars, uh, then it may have a negative impact on the service, which may impact their ratings, which may impact sales, all these kind of things. You know, uh, you, you really need the whole system to go together and be successful as a singular thing, rather than have you know one piece of the company do well and then that causes pressure here. So it's this game of whack-a-mole, right? So we don't want that. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm excited that they're adding more to this because I, I think this is going to be critical uh, as that roll out, just to, even to maintain and um, if you've seen any of my videos you'll know that I've had a couple appointments and yeah um, two in fact where they just came out to my house and fixed it right there in my driveway um, so uh, yeah so th this is true and I think this is really gonna happen so um, there's a graphic here by Bloomberg that I'm gonna try this is gonna be ridiculous I don't know if I can see this but um, I'm gonna hold this up and hopefully you can see it. And there's a link to it in the description, but um, I just wanted to share, this is like right up my alley. So this is talking about Elon saying he can ramp Model 3 production to 10,000 cars a week um, to build 500,000 of all models in 2018. So here's what that looks like in graph form. Hopefully you can see that. If not, you can click on the link there in the description. Um, but it's just pretty shocking. And I'll probably be talking about this a little bit more um, as, as, a, as we get more details on it. But uh, this is the growth story. This is what Tesla wants you to hear. And I, I think they're right about it. I think it's a legit story. And that's why um, that investment firm, you know, up the rating um, to, to outperform, which is great. Okay. Now, 
this is another point from the earnings call, and um, I'm, I'm bringing it up because, I, again, I think it's kind of bogus. It says uh, energy storage is about to take off. Uh, there's been a delay between the first and second generations of Tesla's Powerwall home battery. I can attest to that. I ordered my Powerwall 2 in January, and it's going on mid-May, and I still don't have it. In fact, Tesla issued a statement saying that um, no uh, Powerwall 2s will be delivered prior to June of uh, this year in California. Um, so that kind of sucks. Uh, but, you know, um, so they're saying that it's about to take off. Fine. There definitely is a delay. Um, <clears throat> Uh, utility scale power pack sales have been concentrating among only a handful of large projects. Musk sees quite a dramatic, like a really dramatic ramp in battery storage coming at the end of 2017. The Nevada Gigafactory is on track to surpass its goal of 35 gigawatt hours of battery cell production in 2018. And the company expects to ultimately produce more than 100 gigawatt hours at that location. Um, you know that's interesting, but I believe that what they call what they're calling Gigafactory Two in Buffalo, New York, is where the solar and energy products are being made. Um, you know, perhaps I'm wrong about that, uh, but yeah, you know, I don't wanted to bring this up because it's a point of contention for me. Something I'm not too not too stoked about because I've been waiting for a while now, um, and that combines with, in fact, uh, this week. Uh, my video is all about solar and how I'm using solar to charge my car and what the costs associated with all that are and kind of how it works. And part of that system um, is this kind of, you know, the picture that they painted, which is you have the battery storage, you have the solar, and then you have the electric car. So I have all those things, um, but I'm just waiting on the battery to get delivered. So um, we'll see uh, when that happens. Okay, so let me jump into um, the questions that were asked previously. And I have quite a few of them here, so I'm going to go through these. And and if you do have any, uh, and you want me to take notice, uh, don't forget you can use the super chat feature down below, um, and that will pop up on my screen and make sure I I notice it. Otherwise, I'll wait till I'm done reading these, and then I can um, try to jump into the chat and answer your questions. Okay, so Yuri asks, "Hi Ben, I'm curious how fast uh, how fast charging versus regular slow overnight charging will affect battery longevity." Uh, am I right? Fast charging is a last resort when it's just impossible to wait. And I'm going to combine that with a question from Joseph, which uh, asked a question I, or a comment said, I read something very odd today that sounds like someone is trying to do some uh, damage by creating bad press for Tesla. Uh, they claim that Tesla is keeping track of how many times they fast charge and that Tesla is deliberately decreasing their battery capacity as the number of fast charging intervals are increasing. Um, and he goes on with some more details here. But um, I, I want to bring up there is actually a, a story here uh, about uh, about this, and it's on Electrek, and I put it in the in the notes. Um, and it's about a, a customer who now has uh, essentially overused his DC charging, or sorry, the fast charging, and so now he only can slow charge. Uh, so uh, the deal is, is that um, and he took it into the Tesla service center. He thought if something was wrong with it, um, but the problem was, is this is what their Tesla's official response. They said, um, supercharger general diagnosis conclusion, no trouble found. Review vehicle logs and verify charging is topping out at a lower rate than observed on earlier DC charging sessions. So when you plug in, um, depending on a few factors, but uh, typically you're going to get um, like 120 uh, or m maybe less um, of charge, uh, 120 kilowatts of charge, which is the amount of uh, the speed at which the power is coming in. And he's only getting 90 kilowatts. So um, they're trying to figure out what's going on. And now, according to Tesla engineers, once vehicle has been DC fast charged over a specific amount, the battery management system restricts DC charging to prevent degradation of the battery pack. According to Tesla engineers, the vehicle has seen significant DC fast charging and is now permanently restricted DC charging speeds. Important to note, supercharging will always still be available to the vehicle, and the battery pack has not yet experienced significant degradation due to the amount of DC fast charging performed um, but un until this point in time, but the vehicle is operating as designed. So this, um, this sparked uh, a bit of an outrage on Tesla Motors Club, and, and part of the deal was that uh, look, uh, you know, this is my, my route. This is how I charge. Like, it's up to me to do this. Um, you know, like, you shouldn't limit me. And they're saying, look, uh, the number of charge cycles and the speed at which you charge and all these things definitely have an impact on battery degradation. Now, I did a video on that as well that looked at some real live data. Um, <clears throat> but 
the point was uh, he feels like he's getting kind of gypped out of this, uh, and they're saying, look, we need to protect you. And so I don't know. I don't know where uh, who's right in, in this scenario. I mean, uh, on one hand, um, I think he should be able to do whatever he wants. Um, but on the other hand, I understand that they don't want him, they don't want to have to replace that battery um, you know, in, in incredibly soon because and they're worried about uh, potential issues it may cause. Now, if there were a safety concern, I would absolutely f um, fall on the side of Tesla here. But if they're just talking about battery life, then I don't know. Design better batteries, or um, you know, uh, allow him to you know uh, offset the cost with some kind of kind of uh, replacement program. I don't know what the deal is. It sounds like doing something that that was outside of the scope of what they initially intended um that's maybe you know he's upset about it but um go check that story out it's actually kind of interesting i'm actually curious so what you guys think leave it in the comments there um and uh and, and i'll try to get to that in